Yes. Um, what is different with our sutra? So in Leviticus 23, 39 through 43, we have the command to keep tabernacle. Let me have my first reader read Leviticus 23, 39 through 43. Also in the 15th day of the seventh month, when ye are gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto Yahuwah seven days. And on the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And ye shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and boughs of fig trees, and willows of the brook. And you shall rejoice before you for your elevated seven days. And you shall keep the feast unto Yahuwah seven days in the year. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. You shall celebrate in the seventh month. You shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths. That your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths, and I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. All right. Yeah. You know, and so this is why we keep Sukkot. This is why we keep the Feast of Tabernacle. You know, and, you know, all of Yah's feasts are rehearsal, you know, and they're, they're here to teach us something, you know, and it's not just about you know the physical aspect of it there's a spiritual aspect that's that's crucial you know to our faith and to our walk i mean you know and so you know we read we read the surface level but you know if we don't get into the inner aspect of the word then it's just ancient history you know so you know, we, we need to get into the spiritual aspect so that we might be able to apply it to our lives in today's time. So yeah. that said, we're going to do just that. Leviticus 23, 39 said also in the 15th day of the seventh month, it spoke about the first day and it spoke about the eighth day. You know, so in scriptural numerics, 15 represents rest as well as scarcity. You know, we talk about a day or a month, you know, it just simply speaks to a period of life. And who is life? Yeah. Uh, hallelujah. You know, and the number seven speaks to spiritual completeness in the earth and in the heaven. The gospel speaks to holiness. You know, and the number one, as in the first day, you know, is a number that represents Elohim himself, you yeah. know, and goodness, because all goodness comes from Elohim. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And then we have the number eight. Number eight represents new beginnings. It also speaks to complete fullness. Yeah. You know, and that's how you get a new beginning. When something is completely full. When a mother carries a child in her womb, and when the time is completely full, she brings forth a new birth. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You know, and the same thing, you know, with the cycles, with Yah's cycles, you know, you see, you know. The fullness of the cycle of the sun has just completed and now it's about to, but it has started a new beginning. You know, so the cycle started with the vernal uh, equinox, it ended with the auto equinox, you know, and it start, started over. But instead of the sun staying out longer and longer and longer, this time the night begins to stay out longer and longer and longer. And so 
That's why I expect the tax during this time because this is the time when the night begins to rule over the day. We're children of the light, children yeah. of the day, amen? Yeah. I take note, physically and spiritually, this is the time when the night begins to rule over the day. All through the spring and summer, the day rules over the night. And what you what happens when you see the day ruling over the night, you see stuff springing forth, you see stuff coming alive, you see stuff um, coming to fruit, get to fruitfulness. But as the night begins to rule over the day, what do you yeah. see? You see stuff dying. You see stuff withering. You, yeah. see, you see the leaves falling off the trees. Yeah. You see death and destruction in, the, in nature until life comes back around. Yeah. That is the light. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. You know, so I want this to be at the forefront of your heart and mind, you know, because that's what this time represents. Amen. 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 All right. So, what Scripture is teaching us is that during the seventh month, i.e., Yah's holy month or his time of holiness, at the time when the light is becoming scarce, i.e., going to rest. You know, this is the time when the light truly begins to become scarce. It truly begins to go to rest. Each day, the light gets shorter and shorter and shorter. You know, now, when you have gathered, um, this also speaks to the time when you when you need to gather in the fruit of the land, you know, during the time of complete fullness and new beginnings. Mm -hmm. And you are to keep a feast unto Yahuwah. Yeah. So you gather in this fruit of the land, and this fruit of the land, you know, um, we want to try to stretch it and make it last until light comes back. Until the light begins ruling again. Amen. Amen. You know, so we gather in this the fruit of the land that we might be um try to preserve it so that it can keep us until the next harvest. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Amen. Everybody see the spiritual implications yeah. of that? Yes. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. You know, because uh don't nothing grow in the dark. Nope. Don't nothing grow in the wintertime, doesn't it? Nothing grows when the light is gone. Amen? Amen. You know, so, you know, that means you have to preserve that of this harvest to get through the darkness that's coming. Yeah. And if not, you're going to find yourself in trouble. A lot. So, Leviticus 23, 39 also speaks to when you have gathered in the fruit of the land. All right. So, of course, we're talking about the children of the light. We're talking about the children of Elohim, the children of Yahuwah Elohim, my man, and the son Yahushua. So, when we start talking about gathering in the fruit of the land, we're talking about gathering in the fruit of the land of the kingdom of Elohim. Amen. And so the fruit that we're to bear are the spiritual fruit because we're supposed to be spiritual beings. Amen. Yeah. You know, and so spiritual beings bear spiritual fruit. And the spiritual fruit are found in Galatians 5, 22 yeah. through 26. It says, yeah. but the fruit of the Ruach, yeah. love, joy, yeah. peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, yeah. faith, meekness, temperance against such things, there is no law. And they that be Mashiachs have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Ruach, let us also walk in the Ruach. Let us not be desirous of fame, glory, provoking one another in one. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So this is the time that we are to gather the harvest of the land. Amen. This is the time that we're going to need that love, that joy, that that peace, that long suffering, that gentleness, that goodness. Why? Because the night is beginning to rule over the earth. Amen. So this so. When the night is ruling over, this is when you're going to need that love the most. Mm -hmm. This is when you're going to need to forbear the most, when you're going to need that temperance the most. Because the darkness is in power. Amen? Yeah. See, Amen. it's not by happenstance that Halloween is during this season. Yeah. Yeah. It's not by happenstance 
that the highest day of the occult and the Satanism the is day. in this season. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You know, it's not by happenstance. You know, you have to understand these things. You have to understand the difference between light and darkness. Yeah. You know, because the whole planet goes through these through these cycles. Yeah. And you can think it doesn't affect you. Yeah. But it does. So, so the saints, tabernacles is harvest time. Then it's time to go through the land and gather all that love, joy, peace, long suffering, mm. and stuff out of the out of the land, out of the kingdom of Elohim. And you need to store it up. You need to mm, preserve yeah. some of it. Yeah. Because we're gonna have a lot of darkness coming. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, sometimes it gets rough in the darkness, so you may need some long suffering. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You know, sometimes it get it gets cold and 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 bitter and, and a lot of turmoil goes on in the darkness. You may need some peace. Yeah. So now is the time to harvest it and you know preserve some. You know, you know, and <coughs> when, when the darkness is just bombarding you and, and you know it, you know it's it's depressing. You know, yeah. you may you, you may need to preserve some some joy for that time. Mm -hmm. You know, your enemies they start you know beating you down. You know, and you want to retaliate and you want to take vengeance for yourself, even though you know that Yah says vengeance is mine. You're going to need some love in your heart. Amen. Amen. You know, yes, yes, yes. Love, love, temperance will help too. You know, now also in verse 39, we see that it says, You shall keep a feast unto Yahoo. Hallelujah. You know, this word feast is carved in the Hebrew number 2282. It speaks to a festival or a victim, there, therefore, you know, i.e., you know, a sacrifice for the festival. It also speaks to gladness and rejoicing. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, yes. this is a time of rejoicing. Mm -hmm. This is a time of gladness. Hallelujah. Yeah. This is a time that the saints rejoice. Yes. Hallelujah. Have a grand old time, right? Mm -hmm. This is the most joyous time. Yeah. But seeing that we're spiritual people, we have a spiritual definition of rejoicing and joy, joyfulness mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. You know, but keep that attitude because we definitely still need to rejoice. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You know, this is a feast of rejoicing. Yeah. You know, Deuteronomy 16. 10 and 11 speaks to this. It says, And thou shalt keep the feast of weeks unto Yahuwah thy Elohim with a tribute of a free will offering of thine hand, which thou shalt give unto Yahuwah thy Elohim according to Yahuwah thy Elohim. I bless thee. And thou shalt rejoice before Yahuwah thy Elohim, thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy manservant and thy maidservant and the Levite that is within thy gates and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow that are among you in the place which Yahuwah thy Elohim have chosen the place in the name. Thou shalt rejoice before Yahuwah thy Elohim. You know, and this is not just for the Feast of Weeks, it's for all the cards. Yeah. All the cards of Elohim. All the Feast of Weeks. Also consider Zechariah. 8.19 says, Thus saith Yahuwah Zavaroh, the fast of the fourth month, and the fast of the fifth, and the fast of the seventh, and the fast of the tenth, shall be to the house of Yahuwah joy and gladness and cheerful feast. Therefore, love is true. You know, God's God is always a time, speaks to a time of rejoicing. Amen? Amen. All right. Now, let's see what it means for the spiritual people or the spiritual people that's in the kingdom of Elohim, what it means to rejoice. Yahushua, our Mashiach, he says, and not to Yahoo 5, 11, and 12, he says, blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so for so persecuted they prophets which were before you. So yeah. you need to understand that when we, as spiritual people, you know, of the kingdom of Elohim, and if you are in the kingdom of Elohim, you are a spiritual person because the Messiah taught 
except you be followed from above, i.e. born again, ye shall by no means enter into the kingdom. But if you're in the kingdom, then you are a spiritual being. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. All right. So, and if you're a spiritual being, when it's time to rejoice, that means men are reviling you, they're persecuting you, and they're saying all manner of evil against you for our Messiah's sake or for Yahuwah's sake or for righteousness' sake. That is when we rejoice. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So you see, this is why Tabernacle, the Sukkot, is one of the most joyful times of the year. This is it's the it's the the festival that they rejoice the most in. You know. But they just didn't understand why. Mm -hmm. It's because, spiritually speaking, it speaks to the time when men shall revive you the most, when they shall persecute you the most, when they shall say all manner of evil against you falsely um, for Yah's sake the most. Amen? You know, see, that's what it speaks to spiritually because that's what it means for us to rejoice. You know, so you have to, you have to, understand this concept and, and get a get a hold on this and grasp this because you know a lot of people gonna be looking for you know a physical type party you know and having a physical type good time that's you know right. but that's not what it's speaking of it's, and you can see that even even nature even validates that this is so because you start seeing the darkness rule over the night during this time and you start seeing stuff dying stuff that has life dying that represents the saints dying, yeah. being persecuted, yes. you know, being being reviled, all manner of evil and falsehood, you know, coming up against them. Rejoice. Think about think about Revelation where it speaks of, you know, it's coming a time when it'll be blessed for a person to die. Yeah. Come the time when folks don't want to die and they won't be able to. Right. Wow. Amen. Yeah. You know, you know, blessed are those that die in Yahshua from this point forward. Mm. You know, that's going to be a time of rejoicing. That's going to be a time such as this. Mm -hmm. Also, consider Luke 6 22 and 23. It says, Blessed are ye when men shall hate you. <laughs> See, how many of you want to be blessed? See, I hear a lot of people be talking about they, you know, are you doing blessed and highly favored? Right. Yeah. yeah. Are you really? Blessed are ye when men shall hate you. See, I got a lot of haters. I know I'm blessed. You know? And when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the son of man's sake. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're hearing the blessed man talking, rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. You know, so you see what it means to be blessed. You see what a day of rejoicing is. Yeah. Yeah. It's a day when folks hating on you, yeah. when they separate yeah. themselves from your company, yeah. when they approach you, when they cast you yeah. out. Yeah. You know, your name is, is dirt. Your name is as evil before. Yeah. That's the time when you say hallelujah anyway. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. hallelujah anyway. Also consider Yaakov or James 1. Two through four it says, My brother, count it all joy when you mm -hmm. fall into diverse yeah. temptation. Yeah. Knowing this that the trying of your faith work of patience, but let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire wanting none. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah, we're gonna have to go through some things, but God's gonna keep us through it all. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He's gonna keep us through it all. Yeah. You just gotta make sure you have some proof. You know, don't run out of proof. Amen. 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 Also consider first keepers of Peter chapter four, verses eleven, I mean twelve and thirteen. It says, Beloved, think it not a strange thing concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. You know, the fiery trials they come in. If you're gonna walk this walk, if you're gonna walk it for real. Now I don't know about that play walk that a lot of people are doing, but right. if you're gonna walk it for real, then that fiery trial is coming. It's going to try. Yeah. You know, the enemy has you on his lips. Huh. Yeah. And he coming for you. Mm -hmm. Even as, as he told the Messiah, you know, he, he, he sought to sift keepers as, as wheat. Amen? Amen. Don't think he's not going to sift you. Yeah. Right. Amen? Amen. You know, 
you better you rather be sifted though than uh than than uh you know harvested like grapes are trodden underfoot. Yeah. You know, they lie. <laughs> you know, but the more you go through, the more blessed you are. Hallelujah. So if you're not going through nothing, say lie. <laughs> I'm going to keep going. But <laughs> verse 13, but rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Mashiach's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye shall be, uh, ye may be glad also with the exceeding joy. So if you suffer with him, then you'll have joy with him. Hallelujah. 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 But if you have joy with the world, mm. then you're going to suffer with right. the world. Ah, watch out now. So if you're going to suffer with Yah, then you're going to have joy with him. Yes, Lord. But if you have joy with the world, then you're going to suffer with Yah. Yes. All right. Verse 40. Leviticus 23, 40. It said, and ye shall take you on the first day the balls of goodly tree. The balls of goodly tree. Hallelujah. You know, so what are these goodly trees? Yermi Yahu or Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8, it teaches us what goodly trees are. It says, Blessed is the man that trusteth in Yahuwah and whose hope Yahuwah is, for he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spread about her roots by the river, and shall not see the heat come. But her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall see the yield of fruit. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 That's the topic. Type of tree we want to be right. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, blessed is the man that trusts in Yahoo. Oh, Yahoo is. Yeah. He is a tree. Yeah. 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 Yes, 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 yes. You know, so I just want you to see that trees speak to people. So mm -hmm. this is just a spiritual represent representation of goodly people. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And we know nothing good. Comes forth except it come forth from Yah. Yeah. You know, so these are Yah's people. All right. Also consider Matthew Yahoo 7, 17 and 18. It says, Even so, every good tree bring forth good fruit. Mm -hmm. But a corrupt tree bring forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. And then it goes on to say, Therefore ye shall know them by their fruit. Yep. Yeah. Amen. Amen. See, nobody has no excuse as to why they didn't get it right. Mm -hmm. you, you know, a lot of people think they're going to have the excuse of saying, well, you know, yeah, you know, just so many people saying so many different things. Mm -hmm. You know, he's going to say, but son of God, son of God, did you use my measuring stick? I guess. Right. Well, well, he, well, he sounded so good. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he was articulating. He was smooth. He was charismatic. But but son, did you use my measuring stick? Yeah. Well, how was I to know? Did you use my measuring stick? I told you, by their fruit, you should know. Yeah. Also, consider yes, Yahoo 41, 18 and 19. I will open rivers in high places. And fountains in the midst of valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I will yeah. plant in the wilderness the cedar, the shita tree, the myrtle, the oil tree. I will set in the yeah. desert the fir tree, the yeah. pine yeah. tree, yeah. and the box tree together. Yeah. 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 All right. See, now when you consider the spiritual aspect of this, you know, considering that God took those that he scattered amongst the nations. You know, he placed them in a wilderness, but it wasn't a physical wilderness, it was a spiritual wilderness, yes. and that spiritual wilderness was a wilderness of people. Mm -hmm. You know, so he's talking about bringing, raising up goodly trees in the midst of the wilderness of yeah. people. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. So it don't matter where you are, mm -hmm. he can raise up a That's goodly right. tree in you. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen? Hallelujah. All right, verse 40. It speaks of branches of palm trees and bowls of fig trees and willows of the brook. All right? Mm -hmm. You know, now, uh, when we look at Psalms 92, it teaches us about these palm trees, what kind of trees those are. So we don't went from goodly trees, you know, now we're speaking about palm trees and bowls of fig trees 
as well as other crook. Okay, so these palm trees speaks to the righteous. Psalm 92, yeah. 12 through 14, the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Those be, that be planted in the house of Yahuwah shall flourish, shall flourish in the courts of our Elohim. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat yeah. and flourish. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. See, that's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Palm trees. Yeah. Righteous trees. Yeah. Planted in the house of Yahoo. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Flourish in this court. Bring forth fruit even in their old age. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. All right. Now we're talking about all the fig trees and willows of the brook. All right. Psalms 1, 1 through 3. It says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, for his delight is in the law of Yahuwah, the Torah of Yahuwah, and in his Torah do he meditate day yeah. and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water yeah. that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he do. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's some good stuff right yeah. there. Yeah. Hallelujah. All right. So, you know, now I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. What kind of tree would you like to see? Oh, palm trees. <laughs> palm trees. We got some palm trees. Anybody, anybody for any other type of tree? Mm -hmm. Palm tree. We that's, think well. That's well. not on the list. Cedar. 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 The palm trees represents the spirit, and the bowl, the um, the bowl of thick trees and willows of the brook represents the external, and the three together make up the complete man. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah! You know, so you know, you have all types of trees in the kingdom. You know, you're gonna have you're gonna have some 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 uh fruitful external trees, you know, 30 fold. You're going to have some palm trees, 60 fold. Then you're going to have some goodly trees, 100 fold. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But palm trees are good, you know. Hallelujah. All right. Also, we have Yo 14, 7. It says, for there is hope of a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. So you always have a chance. You always have an opportunity in Yah. Amen? So I want you to uh, just keep that in mind. There's always hope. There's always hope in Yah. Yeah, but... Yeah, you will get cut down if you're not right. Yeah. Hallelujah. All right. So, verse 40 also spoke of rejoicing before Yahuwah, your Elohim, seven days. Yeah. You know, and this word rejoice, we know the spiritual implication of it, but this word rejoice, um, you do like here, the mock number 8055, it means to brighten up, cheer up, to be or make glad. And so we already know what it takes to make spiritual um, being in yeah. Yahshua, spiritual being of the kingdom of Elohim, that you got to go through the physical turmoil. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. You know, uh, spirit, spirit, uh, physical turmoil equals spiritual joy. Yeah. You know, but as you go through that turmoil, as you go through those persecutions, as you go through those, those that hatred and, and things of that nature, you'll also be getting brighter. You know, and so Yah tells us in Matthew Yahoo 5 14 through 16, he says, Ye are the light of the world. Mm -hmm. A city that's set on a hill cannot be hidden. Mm -hmm. 
Not that you can't light a candle and put it under a bush, but on a candlestick and it give us light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven. Yeah, Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, so don't go hiding because you're being persecuted. Don't go running away and 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 and, and cowering because people hating on you. Because people talking about you, you know, for Yah's name's sake. You know, I know it's a whole lot of people talking about me, but they talked about my savior before they start talking about me. That's right. Amen. Amen. So if they they talked about him, who am I? Hallelujah. Less than a leaf on a tree. You know, Psalms 40, verses 9 through 12. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. No, I have not refrained my lips. O Yahuwah, thou knowest I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth in the great congregation. Withhold not thou tender mercies from me, O Yahweh. Let thy loving kindness and thy truth continually preserve me. For innumerable evils have conquered me about me. My iniquities have taken hold upon me so that I am not able to look up. They are more than the hairs of my head. Therefore, my heart fell me. And I know it's not too hard to. I'm more trouble than the hairs in my head. Yeah. 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 So, but yeah. So whenever you get an opportunity to speak God's word, speak. Because he says if you be ashamed of him, he'll be ashamed of you. All right. Leviticus 23, 41 through 43. My next reader, please. You shall keep it at, at peace unto Yahuwah seven days in the year. It shall be statute, a statute forever, forever in your generation. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. You shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths. Uh, that your generation may know that I make the children of Israel. To dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Hallelujah. You know, so he says it should be a statue forever in your generation. You know, in the seventh month, the seventh month is the time of holiness. The time of holiness is a period of life, yeah. you know, and it speaks to a time of holiness, just like in the beginning, you know, when the light first comes, you know, you know, it speaks to holiness. Now he says we shall dwell in booths for seven days. And remember, um, seven also speaks of spiritual completeness in the heaven and in the, in the, in the earthly realm, you know, so with it dwell in booths for seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths. Now, Israelites, let me tell you something about Israel. Don't let anybody tell you anything different. Israel has always been a people. It's always been a people. It's never been a place. Right. That's right. It's always been a people. And it's always been a spiritual people. It has never been a place. Israel is made the compound word. Yeast, Rai, and El. Yeast being man, Rai, evil, El for Elohim. And an Israelite, a true Israelite, is one who wrestles with El and with evil mm -hmm. and prevails by holding on to El. This is how Yaakov received the blessing of the name of Israel. This is how you receive the blessing of the name of Israel. By wrestling with good and evil and prevailing by holding on to that which is good. And nothing's good except for that. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You know, so that's a true Israelite. Yeah. All right. You know, and so when you become an Israelite, you know, that's like you being father from above, i.e., born again. You become an Israelite, you should dwell in booths for seven days. That is, 
which dwell in wolves until you become earthly, spiritually earthly complete, and spiritually heavenly. Amen. Amen. Until you become holy. Amen. Amen. Now, yeah. we're going to dwell in wolves. What is a wolf? Where a wolf is so cold. Number 55, 21, it speaks to a hut, a wolf, a tent, a tabernacle, a temporary dwelling or shelter. All right, so you father from above, and now you inherit this piece of land. This tabernacle, if you will, this temporary dwelling that we call flesh body here. Amen? Amen. All right. Now, we do this because we want everyone else to know that's, that's, that's around you, that's in your generation, that he made sure that Israel dwells in booths. When I brought them out of the land of Israel. You know, so you're going to have to go through something to be father from above. But when you go through something and you're father from above and you become that Israelite, you're going to have to dwell in books. Amen? Amen. Amen. So it's important for the latter generations to know you dwell in books so that they'll know what they have to go through. You know, so it's not, so it's not a surprise to them. Amen? You know, see, that's that's how this stuff was recorded because they made sure that the future generations would know. And because Yahuwah changes not, we can trust that as it was, so it is, and so it will be. You know, and so that's why it's crucial. And to, to testify to that notion, we have 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through 6. My next reader, please. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud, and all passed through the sea. And, and were all baptized unto Moshe in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed. Them. And that rock was Mashiach. But with many of them, Elohim was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were of examples to the intent we should not lust at evil things as they also lusted. Hallelujah. Okay, so we see that these things that happened to physical Israel are our examples so that we know what's going to happen to us and we know how to act accordingly. Amen? Amen. It's to the intent that we shouldn't lust after evil things. We know what not to lust for because we can look and see what they lusted for. So hence we know what not to do. Amen? Yes. Now, this word examples is twofold. It's number um, 5179 and in a technical sense it speaks to the pattern in conformity to which a thing must be made. See, this is the conformity by which we must be made. We have to go through the same things that they went through. Amen? Amen. You know, the way isn't different for everyone. It's the same for everyone. It's the same for everyone. Everyone has to go through the same type thing. You know, hence, 1 Corinthians 7 through 13 continues on. And it speaks about that. Uh, let me have my next reader read 1 Corinthians 10, 7 to 13, please. Neither be ye idolaters, idolaters as were some of them, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt a shield. As some of them also tempted and were destroyed, serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for examples, and they were written for our admonition, upon what whom the ends of the world are come. Whether let them that thinketh he standeth. Take heed, least he fall. There hath no temptation taken of ye, but such as in common to men. 
but Elohim is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but with, with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may, may be able to bear it. Hallelujah. Okay, so this this uh word and samples is the same twofold. Number fifty one seventy seventy nine. You know, uh, sometimes the translators do weird things. You know, they translate the example uh, in verse six and example in verse eleven. Go figure. Anyway, all of these things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition. You know, so this is why, you know, a lot of people want to throw Torah out. They want to throw the Old Testament writings out mm -hmm. and say, well, Yahshua came. We don't need him. No. Mm -hmm. no. Oh, that's that's how we know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, if you throw them out now, we lost. Yeah. Right. You know, these things happen as examples for our admonition so that we can get through this thing. You know, and so you need to know that because. And knowing that, then you know that when you're tempted, that there's no temptation that has come upon you, such as is not common to man. You know, but Elohim is faithful, who will not yeah. suffer you to be tempted above that that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape. You'll always be able to escape. You know yeah. that you may be able to bear. You know, so you know, don't fret. You know, but yes, you're gonna have to go through some stuff. You know, but that's a good thing. You know, that's what we rejoice about. Amen. Amen. You know, and this is the time of rejoicing. Exodus 12, 37. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sukkot, about 600,000 on foot that were men beside children. You know, Ramses, they journeyed from Ramses. So when they left out of Mizraim, the first place they went to was Ramses. Ramses means child of the sun or child of light. Who is light? Yeah. Hallelujah. Can you see within that, you know, they became a child of the most high. Amen. Child of Yahuwah. You know, and when you become a child of Yahuwah, you're going to have to go and dwell in Yeah. To go. You know, first Yoke 915. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declared unto you that Elohim is light and in him is no darkness. Mm. Hallelujah. Yeah. No darkness at all, right? Mm -hmm. right? You know, hallelujah. We want to be children of the light. Yeah. Mm. All right, so that's where it starts. We become that child of light. We become Ramses, right? We, so we stop off at Ramses, become a child, child of the Most High. You know, child of Elohim, and then we have to go to Sukkot. We have to dwell in Booth. This is the example. This is why this is here, so that we can learn this. Amen. Yeah. All right. Exodus 4 22. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith Yahuwah, mm -hmm. Israel is my son, even my firstborn. So I want you to see this, you know, uh, for yourself. So you know I'm just not speaking out the side of my neck. The example is here. You know, Yah called Israel his firstborn, his son, the child of Elohim, the child of light. Amen. And so he told Pharaoh, let my son go. Yes. And when he let him go, he took him into Booths, to Cole. Amen. You see the pattern? Yeah. You got to see the pattern because it's the same way we're going. So yeah. they get into Sukkot. This word Sukkot is, of course, booth, tents, hut, tabernacle, temporary dwelling. So that's the same as you. You get baptized, amen? Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, or even even before then, you, you get called. Yeah. You know, Yah is calling you, yeah. you know, and you accept the call. You become a child of the Most High. All right? You know, then he said, he sent, sent you into, into uh, your father from above, you know, um, born again, you know, and and you you're inside this flesh body, you know. You go to Sukkot, you're inside this flesh body, you know, and so now you're like, okay, what do I do now? Well, you have to tabernacle here for a while. You have to this this becomes your your place of residence for a while, you know. 
and this tabernacle to speak to the flesh body to validate this notion. We have 2 Corinthians 5, 1 through 4 says, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of Elohim and house not made with hands, yes. eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. Hallelujah. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we are in this tabernacle, for we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened. See, so while we're in this tabernacle, while we're dwelling in booths, we're going to groan, we're going to be burdened. Not for that we should be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality that might be swallowed up of life. You know, so even though we groan right now, we're burdened right now, there's coming a time when we're going to get an immortal body and there will be no more tears. Yeah. There'll be no more pain. There'll be no more despair. Amen. Amen. Second Corinthians 5, 5 through 10. Now he that have wrought us the self-same thing is Elohim, who also have given us, um, given unto us the earnest of the Ruach. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are present from the Adonai. We are absent, yeah. I'm sorry, absent yeah. from the Adonai. Yeah. But we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, and I say, and willing, rather, to be absent from the body, to be present with the Adonai. Wherefore, we labor that we're rather present or absent, we may be accepted of him. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we must appear before the judgment seat of Mashiach, that every one they receive the things done in his body according to that he have done, whether it be good or bad. Mm -hmm. So we're all dwelling in booths. And you're going to be judged based upon your dwellings in these booths, whether it be good or whether it be bad. Mm -hmm. Say mm -hmm. All right, Exodus 12, 38 through 40. And a mixed multitude went up also with them, and flocks and herds, even very much cattle. And they baked unleavened um, cakes of the dough, which they brought forth out of Mitzrayim. For it was not leavened, because they were thrust out of Mitzrayim and could not tear it. Neither had they prepared for themselves any victory. You know, so they left up out of there a mixed multitude. When you come out of the world, you're a mixed multitude as well. Mm -hmm. You know, you have, you have Yah that's working with you, but you still have some some, some heathens, <laughs> some unclean spirits that's, that's um, working with you as well. Mm -hmm. You are a mixed multitude whether you know it or not. Yeah. You know, and that's when the battle begins. Mm -hmm. You know, that's when you start wrestling with the good and the evil. Amen? Amen. Yeah. You know, now, it says they bake unleavened cakes. This word unleavened, spiritually speaking, is without hypocrisy. That's bread without, that's teaching the instructions without hypocrisy, without wickedness, with the doctrines of the Pharisees, nor the doctrines of Herod. You know, this is unleavened cakes. And this is what we're to eat. When we're thrust out of this by but you come out of the world, this is this is what you eat, you know, and this is speaks the scripture that you want it without hypocrisy, you want it without wickedness, or the doctrines of the Pharisees, or the doctrines of Herod. Herod speaks to the doctrines of the government, he was king. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right, verse 40. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Mizraim for Egypt was 430 years. And it came to pass at the end of 430 years, even the self same day. It came to pass all that all the hosts of Yahuwah went out from the land of Israel. You know, so 400 speaks the truth. The eternal king testings and temptations for man's final destination. You know, and number 30, the blood of Messiah in a small battle. So you're always going to come out of Israel. It's going to be a small battle that takes place. It's going to be some testings and temptations that's going to be going on in the midst of. Amen. Amen. You know, yeah. you have to recognize that this is how it happens. You know, for, um, Exodus 13, 17, and 18, and it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, 
that Elohim led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For Elohim said, let's pair them to the people who did when they see war and they return from Israel. But Elohim led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea or the Reed Sea. You know, and the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Israel. Okay, so speaks about a wilderness. The word wilderness is Midbar in the Hebrew number 457. It's from the bar in a, um, in a sense of driving. The bar is number 1696, and it speaks to word, to the word, or to arrange or use figuratively of the word. You know, so we, what we're seeing here is God is going to take you into a place where he's going to drive you to words. Mm -hmm. You know, what's what's y'all what's an epithet for Yahshua? What's another name for Yahshua? The word. He's going to drive you with words. Mm -hmm. See the connection? Mm -hmm. Psalm 63, 1, O Elohim, thou art my Elohim. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. We're talking about a wilderness right there. Yeah. All right? You know, yes, if you get out there, you will become thirsty. Mm -hmm. See, but learn from Israel alone. Don't complain. Right. Don't murmur. Just hold on. Yep. Persevere. Endure. Because if need be, God will bring water from a rock. Right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We know who the rock is, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. All right. Psalm 1026, I am like a pelican of the wilderness. I am like an owl of the desert. Okay, so these <coughs> pelicans and these owls, these are unclean birds. That's what live in the wilderness. So an unclean birds represents unclean spirits. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That's what live in the wilderness, right? Yeah. Who's in the wilderness? We are. Yeah. What's in the wilderness? Well, unclean spirits. Yeah. Dry and thirsty land, there's no water. Water speaks to counsel. You know, don't know which way to go. Just gotta wait for this cloud to move. You know, don't know where we're going. You know, just sitting ducks. But yeah. But yeah, right? Yeah. right. Yeah. You know, now keep in mind that it says in verse 18 that they went up harnessed out of the land of Israel. Well, what, what is this word, harness? It's Kamush, number 2571. It speaks to something that's staunch, i.e. loyal and committed in attitude. That is able-bodied soldier. So he's not gonna let you, he's not going out, you know, just any old type of way. You know, you're coming out loyal and committed in attitude and you're able-bodied. You have everything that you need because God's lead. Amen. You know, so you're an able-bodied, loyal and committed soldier. Yeah. At least in the beginning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, Exodus 13, 19, and 20. And Moshe took the bones of Yosef with him, for he had straightly sworn the children of Israel, saying, Elohim will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones hence away hence with you. And they took their journey from Sukkot and encamped in Ethan in the edge of the wilderness. Now, Ethan means their plowshare. A plowshare. Is a blade, a steel blade that cuts the top layer of, of soil. How, how many of you, you know, know and understand that we're made from the dust of the earth? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. A plowshare is a steel blade that cuts the top layer of soil. Mm -hmm. Did you catch that? Mm -hmm. You know, we made from dust, dust of the earth. Plowshare. Is a steel blade that cuts the top layer of the soil. Amen. Amen. What's the top layer? Yeah. Flesh. Yeah. Flesh. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Flesh got to be cut away. So when you start dwelling in booths, first thing that comes next is the flesh got to start getting cut away. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You see the pattern? Yeah. yeah. All right. Hosea 10, 11, and 12. And Ephraim is as a heifer that is caught in love to tread about the corn, but I passed over upon her fair neck. 
I will make Ephraim to ride. Yahuda the, uh, shall plow, and Yaakov shall break his plow. Mm -hmm. So to yourselves, righteous, reap his mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek Yahoo mm -hmm. till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Hallelujah. 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 Yahuda shall plow. You know, who came through the door of Yahuda? Even our Messiah, Yahushua, right? right? Hallelujah. If you let him, he's going to plow. Mm -hmm. If you let him, he's going to put that plow shed to, to your flesh. That's if you let him. Mm -hmm. he's, he's a gentleman. He's not going to force himself upon you. Right. Right. First Corinthians 9, 9 and 10. For it is written in the Torah of Moshe, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth for the ox that tread about the corn. Do yeah. Elohim take care for oxen? Yeah. Or says he it all together for our sakes, for our sakes, no doubt this is written. That he that follow should plow in hope. And he that special in hope should be partaker of his hope. You know. And that's just a fancy way of saying God has made provision for us. He's gonna make sure you're okay. Amen. Exodus 13, 21 and 22, and Yahuwah went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night and took not away the pillar of the cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people and this is why scripture still exists now today yes. because scripture is the spiritual form of that pillar of a cloud and that fire that led through the night, mm -hmm. that cloud by day and that pillar of fire by night. Well, and to speak to this notion, we have Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. It says, Wherefore, seeing we are also are accomplished about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, the sin which do us so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Yahushua, the author and finisher of our faith. For um, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of Elohim. Did, did you see? He said, wherefore, seeing we are also accomplished about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Mm -hmm. See, spiritually speaking, a cloud can speak to witnesses. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have a bunch of witnesses in the Old Testament writings. They're called the prophets. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. 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 You know, so... That's our cloud of witnesses. And then we have our pillar of fire, which is the brick Kadashah, the New Testament writing. Hence, you see in 1 Keepers 4, 12 through 15, beloved, think it not a strange. Uh, um, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is tried as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of the Mashiach suffering, that when the glory shall be revealed, ye shall be glad also with exceeding joy if ye. Be reproached for the name of Mashiach. Happy are ye. Mm -hmm. For the Ruach, the glory, and of Elohim rests upon you, and their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he, he is glorified. Mm -hmm. and let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evil doer, or as a busybody mm -hmm. in other men's matters. If mm -hmm. you suffer for those mm -hmm. types of things, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, then, yeah, that's, mm -hmm. you're just, you know, getting what, what you got coming to. You know, mm -hmm. there's no glory in that. Mm -hmm. but, you know, See, but the point that I'm that I'm trying to get you to see is that you know all Yahshua's apostles, all his disciples, his apostles, all those in whom he sent forth into the world, mm -hmm. they were tried by fire. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so they are that pillar of fire. Together they make that pillar of fire that will help us get through the night. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, so when we're going through the night, when the darkness is overcoming us. You know, we need to go to the great kind of shop. We need to go to the New Testament, right? Yes. Now, when it's daylight out and we just confused, we don't know which way to go, we need to seek the Old Testament because that's where our direction is. Mm -hmm. Psalm 78, 1 through 8. My next reader, please. Give, give ear. O oh, my people, to my law, incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. 
which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generations to come the praises of Yahuwah and his strength and his wonderful works that he has done. For he established a testimony through Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might be set for their hope in Elohim and not forget the works of Elohim, but keep his commandments and might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, mm. a generation that set not their heart aright and whose heart was not steadfast with Elohim. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. That they might set their hope in yeah. Elohim. That's yeah. where we put our hope, right? Yeah. And not forget the works of Elohim, but yeah. keep his commandments. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. It might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation. Yeah. A generation that is that set not their heart aright and whose Ruach was not steadfast with Elohim. Yeah. We're going to keep our steadfast with Elohim. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We're going to yeah. rejoice before Yahuwah Elohim this day. This yeah. is his high day. This yeah. is the day that he has made. Yeah. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. That's all I have for you today. Pray with a blessing. Hallelujah.